Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, the Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity in one God, have mercy on us. May we understand your holy will. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we realize our true relationship with you in this life and the life to come. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we continue to work with you in building your kingdom on earth. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we unite ourselves with you in the sacred mystery of the altar. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we recognize the greatness of this most holy sacrifice through which we worship you. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we feed on the bread of life no more to hunger. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we have a share in the offering of Jesus on the cross. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we fulfill our lives with your ideals, be joined with you in the supper of the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we perceive all of us and everybody in your all of the baby presence. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we end our days in your holy name, in our hearts and on our lips. Grant our prayer, Lord. Forgive our sins, O God. Grant our prayer, Lord. Cleanse and renew our hearts. Grant our prayer, Lord. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here this morning. Uh, it's a big day for the holy name of Jesus. We're hosting the 30th annual Crop Walk for Franklin County. Uh, they're hoping to raise $30,000, and we did extremely well uh, here at Holy Name of Jesus, better than I've ever seen, and I'd like to thank everyone uh, who has helped in that. Uh, after Mass, we'll have a quick meeting so that we can kind of figure out who's going where to do all the different jobs and setting up here at, at two water stations, and uh, I'm really looking forward to today. It's supposed to be a beautiful afternoon. We have... Um, Brian Johnson coming this afternoon to have some guitar music out here in our little grassy area between the church and the rectory. And uh, I think it's just going to be a nice day. So if you even want to just stop by anywhere between 1 and 2, you're more than welcome to do so. And uh, we have people who will be taking pictures and FCAT is going to be videotaping. Uh, so you'll be able to watch the whole thing even if you're uh, not able to join us. But it should be a nice afternoon. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, today is my youngest daughter's, my youngest daughter's 21st birthday. I don't know how in the world, because I'm only 35, and I've got a 21-year-old daughter. So I figured it's her 21st birthday today, so I wouldn't call her before church, because I don't know how she decided to celebrate her 21st birthday, but I will be calling her later and wishing her the best of everything. Um, it's not in my sermon today, so I can just want, I just pay attention to today's gospel because this is one that would surprise uh, the people of Jesus today. Because usually, um, if you have a judge or something like that, the main character in the parable, that judge would be, you know, kind of linked with God. Uh, but this is not a nice guy. He's not a good judge. He's a corrupt judge. And then the whole message of the parable is about prayer and persistence in prayer, and that links us with an annoyingly persistent old woman who just nags this mean old judge until he finally grants her her wish. And you know, it doesn't sound nice about prayer, it doesn't sound nice about God, but the message that Jesus is trying to do, he shocks his audience, is that we have to be persistent in our faith. We have to be persistent in what we do in worship. We have to be persistent in what we do when we ask God for things. It's not like, you know, you turn to God, give him a couple of bucks, snap the fingers, and there it is. Faith is a persistent journey. And as, you know, as, as strange as Jesus' parable was, he did that on purpose so that it would stick in people's minds. And when you hear that parable, think about being the first people to ever hear that message and to talk about God in terms of like an unjust judge and people going to worship, to mass, to prayer as being persistently annoying. Uh, but that's that whole message that Jesus tries to, to get us to think that we have to hang in there, that we have to keep doing things week after week, day after day. And that's what faith is. It's a journey. It's not just, you know, jumping in and hoping for the best. It is a journey. And as we begin that journey for this new week, on this first day of the week, this Sunday morning, I ask you at this time to please make a private examination of your conscience.
and may we never say to be here together. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O oh God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully for all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, martyrs, and faithful, who have lived, suffered, and died for the gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with us. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish the remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandment and by love, truth, and justice. Let us all say together, let us praise the Holy Trinity, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now, and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace with the people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, in your holy word, you have taught us about the necessity to pray always without becoming weary. You hear us when we call upon you, help us persist in our prayers, and grant us patience to await your reply. We ask for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the Old Testament of Exodus. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men for us and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. 
This is the word of the God of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Will he bend his light to the Almighty and call upon him constantly? Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. She cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips so that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. And he said, There was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and even strike me. And the Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith on earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Moses could no longer, on his own, keep his arms outstretched. 
don't know if you've ever done that, you know, that little exercise where they ask you to put out your hands and just keep them there as long as you possibly can, sometimes even holding something. You know, even for the strongest people, even for like the top ratings of the world, eventually those arms get a little bit tired. And so that's what's happening with Moses. His arms outstretched are getting tired. And this is when Aaron and Hur help to support Moses by holding up his arms, one on one side, the other on the other. The priests of God supporting the leader of God's people. Now I know that this allowed Israel to defeat and slaughter their enemy, but let's concentrate on the message instead that sometimes we may need the help of others to do what we have to do. And even more specifically, sometimes we need the help of religion, Aaron and Hur, or the priests of Israel, to do what we have to do. If the hero of the Exodus, if the man revered as the highest prophet and giver of the law, if Moses had to accept the help of others, even as he was trying to fulfill the will of God, the commandment of God, then the message is clear that to give assistance is holy, but on the other hand, something we don't always remember or want to emphasize is that to accept assistance can also be holy. So today, with this crop walk, we have the opportunity to give assistance. And we think about the other people as, you know, receiving it and then being thankful and all that. But the other side of this is we give and they receive. And that is both holiness. Holiness to give and holiness to receive. We are not the only ones who are being holy. If you had the chance to switch places, would you rather be the one who gives the help? Or would you rather be the one in some devastated country, say like Haiti, being the one receiving the help. I don't think any of us would want to switch places. So to receive is also a blessing because the ones who have to receive are probably in a much worse situation than we who are able to give. So this whole message of Exodus and helping each other is a timely message and a fortunate coincidence that the church asks us to read this passage on the same day that we, for the very first time, are hosting the Franklin County Crop Hunger Law. These events began in either 1969 or 1970. They began a little bit informally, and so the actual start date is you know, still contested, but nevertheless, they have been around for nearly half a century. The walk here in Franklin County is observing this year its 30th anniversary, and we are one of about 1,100 walks all across the United States of America. Our 200 or some odd participants will help to make up the 114,000 people nationwide who will participate in these walks. And we hope to raise at least $30,000, which will be combined with other walks for a total of over $11 million that will help to fight hunger worldwide and also right in each of our own backyards. The Crop Hunger Walks are sponsored by Church World Service. Now this Christian ministry was born in 1946, right after the end of World War II. 17 different Christian denominations came together at that time to form one agency. And in their own words, in their manifesto, it says, to do in partnership what none of us could ever hope to do as well alone. Coming together to do more than any of them could do alone. In other words, they came together to support each other, just like that picture on your song sheet this morning of Aaron and Hur, the priest, helping to hold up Moses' hand and his outstretched arm. Even with the best of intentions, even while trying to do the will of God, we sometimes need help. We sometimes can do so much more together than we could ever, ever hope to do alone. It's a blessing to be able to help, and it's also a blessing to be able to receive. You know, it's hard for us sometimes to receive, but today's message says that that is also a Christian blessing. Those original 17 denominations of church world service have expanded to 37, and one of those denominations is our very own church. Church world service defines its purpose according to the traditional works of mercy, and those are found in the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, and there God tells his prophet about the distinction between false and true worship. And it's a message that we always need to keep in mind. God's worship, he says, is not limited to the liturgical. Isaiah says you can go to the temple, you can offer all of your sacrifices, you can petition me all you want, but Isaiah, the spokesman for God, says that is not enough. It reaches out into the real world, 
and it makes real world, real world choices and real world actions important to God. Those choices and actions involved, according to the prophet who is speaking God's word, involves feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, healing the sick, comforting the aged, and sheltering the homeless. And this is what church world service is defined as their mission, and this is what the crop walks are trying to help to fund. This becomes worship. We are honoring and praising God by being here this morning. We are here, here to participate in a liturgy that brings God into our community, and that is a holy action. And we continue our worship of God this afternoon in all that we do to support each other as churches working in partnership through church world service to support those in desperate need by whatever we can do, whether it be baking a cookie, whether it be walking, whether it be raising money, whether it be passing out a bottle of water, whatever we can do to help raise that $30,000 is actually part of our worship of God as church. And what I'm trying to say is that our participation in the crop walk and all those other things that we do here at Holy Name of Jesus, these are not the incidentals of being church. They are the essentials of being church. You know, this building here, and I always say this when we're outside in the summer on those gorgeous days beneath our maple trees, this building here could have a terrible fire on a Saturday night, and on a Sunday we could still gather for worship because this beautiful building is not an essential of being church. But what we do this afternoon, says Isaiah, speaking the word of God, that is essential. So we come here today to worship God, and that is church. Not where we worship, but as coming together, that is church. And what we do this afternoon, that is also church. The chance to host this event is a learning opportunity to teach this message, and that is why I hope that every one of our School of Christian Living students would have had the chance to participate today. And I ask them, and I try, but the schedules are so busy, and etc. But you know, at some point, those students are not going to remember that Isaiah is the source for the corporal works of mercy. But I don't think that they would ever forget today's lesson of going out there and walking with 200 people, raising money, being in fraternity, having a good time, and trying to understand that that is also worship. The Christian faith is always, always, always that is shared faith. Jesus hardly ever did anything by himself. As soon as he went off to the mountains by himself, he came back down and he immediately joined that small group that was around him. The earliest Christian believers never went off to be by themselves in their home and say their prayers. They gathered together as church. It's always been the tradition of church, of Christian church, that we are an assembly of people. And this is why church, as the people assembled together by God's call, is absolutely so essential. We can do so much more together than any of us can do alone. So let us pray that we're both able to support others and that we also, when we need, Learn to accept the support of others. And for these things we pray in Jesus' most holy of names. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mighty Lord, as we gather on this special Sunday when we get to host the 30th annual Franklin County Crop Walk, we thank you for all those people who have been so generous. We thank you for those people who have volunteered uh, to work today. We thank you for those people who have volunteered to walk today. We also offer our special attention to the soul of Michael Fury, who died on October 11th of this year. This is being offered by the Lawrence family. We also continue to offer our prayers for those battling cancer. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Strosky. Randy Clements by Grandmother Dottie Baronis. Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Fuster, Fathers Ray Dreda, Jan Bielczyk and Maurice Lazell is offered by myself. Richard Poe is offered by the Poe and Foster families. Two-year-old Jack Siegel is offered by Marianne Foster. Frank Sprosky is offered by his twin brother Don. Sprosky Gates and Kirkendall families. And Liz Richmond, recently diagnosed with cancer and raising three young girls on her own, is offered by Cindy Benjamin. Are there any intentions that you would like to offer from the congregation? In memory of Rick Baranowski, who passed away on Wednesday evening. Rick Baranowski. Jack Siegler, who passed away on Wednesday evening. 
Jared Bull and I can pass away this week. Rick and Jared, right? <coughs> Lord, for all of these intentions offered, plus the private ones that we bring before your altar, the privacy of our thoughts, we ask the Lord to hear all of them. We ask the Lord also to bless each and every one of us here gathered, to be with those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today, and also to be with those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, who the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made of one being. Through him all things were made for us and our salvation. He came down from heaven, and the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious pile, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead.
Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, then, whose memory we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Eternal God, may we who offer these gifts to you never cease to call upon you for your grace and for your love, and to remain steadfast in your service as we live and spread your holy word. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. 
I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread to his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, my fool, we your servants, as also your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and a matter offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls the saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offer be brought by you the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine Son. <laughs> that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life. And to those who are in life straight from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine Master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord but whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed.
following by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, What shall I return unto the Lord for all the grace that he has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life.
Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
You are my God. Lord, to you I call all the day long. The Lord be with you. by you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came to being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all through Him might believe, but only to testify to the light, for He Himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory the glory of an only Son, coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Amen. Amen. 